Welcome back everyone to the BD1P Vanilla Plus modded series. Today is going to be a Tainted Bethany run for win number 216 here, hopefully. Today's question of the day, put your answer in the comments down below if you feel like it is going to be. Just uh, give me shows and recommendations of stuff to watch right now. Seed, by the way, is going to be B6K8BW6T. The reason being is because a lot of the shows that I've been watching have either just wrapped up or have been taken off of streaming services, sadly. Those two shows I'm talking about in reference, by the way, are uh, Euphoria, which just ended its second season. Okay, cool. Yeah, that was a, a very easy way to get out of that one right there. And also um, Jessica Jones. I was in the middle of watching or rewatching, I should say, season two, and then... Disney said, nope, we're taking it off Netflix now, goodbye. So now I have nothing to watch anymore in my entire life. It's weird though, right? Because they allowed Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, Iron Fist and Punisher and all of those shows to show up or stay on Netflix through the release of Spider-Man uh, and all of these other Marvel properties. But for some reason now, they're like... We're not going to allow them to stay up anymore just because of reasons. I don't know what their actual reason is. I, I could just be making shit up, but I'm guessing it's because Daredevil's gotten a huge boost in popularity since Spider-Man came out, and they want to capitalize off of that. But if that's the case, why didn't they, like, put it on Disney Plus years ago when they started doing their own Marvel shows like WandaVision, uh, Loki? And uh, what's the other one? The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Like, why Why wait? Why wait till, till just now? It's, it's a very weird, like, um, time to do it, I feel like. But regardless, uh, yeah. So I was, I think, like, episode six or seven of season two. And then I got the notification, like, hey, we just took off all of our Marvel shows. Uh, fuck you from Netflix. So there kind of really is, like, no reason to have Netflix anymore. It, it's... It's only there to watch the Marvel shows and then Stranger Things. And that's out of just, like, a, a requirement. If you have Netflix, you have to watch Stranger Things. It's some, like, unspoken fucking rule, I feel like. Because it is, it was their first, I think, really big original show that, that I can recall uh, being big when I was a little bit younger. And then they had, like, Daredevil a, a premiere and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and stuff, which are all pretty okay shows, Daredevil being my favorite, Jessica Jones being a close second, but, well, those two are amazing shows. Iron Fist is garbage, Luke Cage is kind of just, like, borderline good, kind of bad, and then Punisher, I'd say, is pretty alright. So, outside of those, like, couple of shows, is there really any other reason to watch Netflix? I mean, I, I can't think of, like, a single reason. I, uh, no, I gotta maybe put five bombs down to access that damn library jeez louise man i'll take it though i'm not gonna open the golden chest the library could give us bookworm floor one or book of sin a uh, book of shadows it could give us the bible the best book in the freaking game baby but we'll see what you got for me in here it was book of shadows and it was we're we're bookworm now yes we are bookworm now we can pop that for this floor, we get Pop a Fly. Hell yeah, we get. I'm gonna take Book of Shadows. I think uh, it, it's a quicker charge and it allows us to do more utility-based things like curse rooms for free and IV machines. But I don't know. There really isn't another reason to to watch Netflix. I mean, I can't think of a single other redeeming show that it has. I mean, every other original show has been, wow, Planetarium has been just completely awful. I feel like uh, I'm not trying to generalize. There might be some hidden gems out there, but. From what I've seen on there, um, a lot of the shows are bad. They have, like, the whole Hype House documentary. Actually, no, they have, you know, I guess, is this an original series, though? They have the uh, Unabomber stuff. I don't know if that's, an uh, like, an original series or not. I could have hermit carded. Oops. It might be an original series. I actually don't know. I think the Unabomber Manhunt show is... Oh. So that's Uranus. Soul. You're Jupiter? And you're Neptunus. Ah, man. I think I, I would want Uranus anyways. In terms of quality, it's the highest in the room. And Ice Tears are really, really good. So I'll take Uranus there, I think. I'm, I'm happy with that. I was kind of hoping for, like, uh, a little bit more punch in there. Maybe a Terra. Maybe a, uh, a Pluto. But I think Uranus is one of the, the top planetarium items for sure. Anyways... There really is no other reason. I mean, even Stranger Things, like, 
if I hadn't already watched and sunk time into the first three seasons years ago, I wouldn't feel an obligation to watch it. But now that, like, they have their official season four and then a season five being their last one, I, I want to see it out to the end. It may not be the greatest show of all time, but I do want to close that out and uh, just kind of enjoy the ending of a show that I thought was, was pretty damn good. Big miss opportunity there, though. They could have definitely... Uh, made, I think, a, a way better and more long-standing show if it was going to be an anthology series, which was their original plan, was to have it be about different kids each time and different towns each time, but I, I think they they realized the success of, of the first season was due to child breakout star Finn Wolfhard and, and the other ones. <laughs> I don't know any of their names, to be real with you, but I think they were just too scared to... I don't... Oh, we can actually go to the planetarium and pop Lemiga Town. I think they were just, honestly, a little bit too scared to drop Finn Wolfhard. And, um... Oh, D David Harbour was also in the show, I believe. Because they, they are both uh, star actors in their own rights. Uh, but I think it definitely would have had a much shorter production time and had a lot more content and lore if it would have ended up just being an anthology series. But I'm still happy with what we got, to be real with you. Aside from that, though, like, I guess they did have Killing of a Sacred Deer on there for a bit, which was great. Uh, it, it's it's definitely a movie, I think, worth watching, albeit not one of my favorites. I kind of don't like it that much, but I, I see the, uh, I see the, the, the worth for sure. And they also occasionally put on, like, your random animated Batman or live-action Batman films. They had Batman Returns, they had... Batman Begins, they had the Dark Knight trilogy for a while on there too, so they do have occasionally good things to watch, but you can watch any of the Batman movies on HBO, all of the animated ones and, and everything else, uh, so I don't know, Netflix is, is gonna lose a lot of money. I think Squid Games is also a pretty good one, albeit like fucking memed to death at this point. I think it's still definitely worth your time to watch. It's, it's a good show. It's definitely, a, I would say it's a great show, but Outside, like, Squid Game single-handedly rose their profits by, like, two times the amount when it got big. And now that they're making a season two or a, a second version of it, um, people are pretty excited for it. And I, I understand why, although, to be completely real with you, uh, I don't think it needs a second season or a second part. But, hey, I'm not a Netflix executive, so I really can't say for sure. Are Wisps? Oh, they do get burned. Okay, never mind. I thought having uh, a shield made your wisps also invincible, but I must be mistaken there. Uh, hit. We hit him. Big brain. All right, done. Easy boss fight. Uh, I'm not going to go. Well, we did get latch key. Maybe we should go to. No, I'm going to go angel. I, I feel the angel on this run right now. But yeah, Netflix doesn't have anything worth watching anymore. Now that all the Net the, the Marvel shows are gone and, and Stranger Things uh, ending pre pretty soon. I don't know. It's not worth my money or my time, but lucky for me, I don't actually pay for Netflix myself, so <laughs> I'm in the clear, baby. Oh, but having Uranus means we can't take advantage of the extra pickups. That kind of blows. Ooh. Number two is Infinite Bomb, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it, and I'll in stride and be happy with it. But um, aside from them losing the Marvel shows, Euphoria just ended. I'm not going to talk about Euphoria for a long time. It's honestly not worth my time. It was a pretty fucking awful season. Um, that I, I don't even think if you are thinking about watching Euphoria with how bad season two is I honestly would say just watch season one and then binge all of season two once they announce an official season three because it is really not worth your time to try and sit through season two it's, it's not going to be worth it just trust me it was it was dog I, I've never seen an ending to a, a, a show like that be so inconclusive and so messy. I really didn't know what was going on half the time. My, my biggest gripe is that in season one of the show, there's this very emotional scene of the main character giving a speech at her dad's funeral. And I kid you not, they use that, that same exact season one cut of that scene uh, for 30% of the episode of the closing season two episode. It's not even original content. It's just borrowed from season one, and that's their finale. Like, it doesn't add anything new. There's no new perspective. It, it's simply just... I don't even know. It's, it's just the same thing from season one, but rehashed. It, it doesn't do it for me. 
And to be honest with you, it shouldn't be allowed to happen. Like, that wasn't a, a, a finale. It was just, hey, remember this, this emotional thing from Season 1? We're doing it again. It's like, that doesn't count. That doesn't fucking count. And, and besides that, one of the main actors on the show is a musician named Dominic Fike, who I used to be pretty privy toward. I, li I liked his music a lot back in the day. Uh, when he had his first debut album, Andy P, come out, I thought it was pretty all right. I, I had a good time listening to it. Uh, for some reason, in, in the ending episode of, of Euphoria, which should be the most important one, your final episode to date, uh, they give him a four and a half minute song that he plays while the camera literally just focuses on him and will occasionally cut to Zendaya's character across the room. There's nothing going on. The song has no emotional value in the show. It quite literally is just him playing a song for four and a half minutes. And that's it. That's his entire role. They introduce this character into the show to put this kind of strain on the main character and her girlfriend's relationship, but they don't give the girlfriend any fucking screen time and then take this problem character and make him a main character who just ends up being a druggie who plays guitar and almost kills Rue by giving her heroin. Or not heroin, it was like cocaine or some shit. It, it was awful. The the new characters, aside from Faye, were... Even Faye was pretty pointless at times. She didn't need to be in the show at all. Uh, they got way... They, they, they didn't take themselves... They, they took themselves too seriously. Like, this is a show what is, what, that is supposed to be about, uh, in my eyes, um, the main character overcoming her addiction. And it ended off in Season 2 with the SWAT team raiding a side character's house and shooting a guy in the head. And that was like the big buildup, which the side character who got shot in the head, might I add, was a side character to a side character. Like, Holy Mantle, okay, none of, of the plot was cohesive. None of it fucking mattered, like, at all. And it was just, it was, there was a sour taste in my mouth at the end because it felt like almost all of my questions were not answered. And that's a really bad way to end a show. Like, to put it in perspective, I recently, I think the best show that I've watched for the first time recently, actually the best show I've ever watched in my entire fucking life besides, like, Twin Peaks was uh, a show called The Handmaid's Tale that my girlfriend put me on to, and I fucking loved that show. It was honestly just, it, it's a work of fucking art. It's, it's like a perfect show. And although the seasons sometimes ended off in ways that I didn't really agree with, um... I at least understood the point of it, and it was conclusive, and each season could stand on its own. Like, there wasn't that whole, like, here's a big cliffhanger to keep you hooked. It was just the season ends, and you're satisfied. Uh, I, I think the best example of a season ending in a really kind of a cliffhangery way, but one that, that could be a conclusive end to the show if need be, was I think it was like season two or three where it had to be season three. Um, the main character gave birth to a child who was forced to live in this world where women are not treated equally at all. So America, no, uh, it's, it's like their soul just to pretty much end up being, um, walking, talking, breathing maids who give birth for, um, women who are, ha, ha, cannot give babies or cannot, cannot give it, cannot have birth is a better way to say that one. And not like a fucking three-year-old trying to say it. And... The lady who gave birth to this, this baby girl wanted to get the baby girl out of this town. So she goes to this really complex network of, of like a resistance and finds a way to get not just her baby, but also her out of this town called, or this, this city called Gilead forever. And at the end of the, the season, she gets her baby to the kind of like the safe place. And then she decides, I want to stay back because I want to help other ladies get their babies out. And while that could have been taken as like, oh, season three is going to be about her helping other ladies, it also could have been conclusive in the fact that she kind of found peace and knew that if she wanted to make a big difference, she would have to stay behind to help other people. So while it was, it does leave room for a next season, it also ties it up with a nice fucking bow. And Euphoria uh, leaves so many open ends that honestly, even in the season they were introduced in, don't get... You are spawning way too many fucking troll bombs. That was a great drop, but still, that was ridiculous. Pop that, blue map, huge. Um, Euphoria leaves so many random open ends, and 
writes off so many interesting characters and destroys so many good plot lines that season two destroys what I think everything that season one tried to build up. Character relationships, character growth, it all goes down the fucking drain in return for some cheap high school drama. Which, the show is set in a high school, so that makes sense, but the high school drama is stuff that isn't even entertaining to watch. Like, usually high school drama is, like, at least fun to observe when you're in high school, or, like, watching it from afar. But, like, in the show, it's like, I don't care. Like, I I get it, you know. Oh, Cassie, oh, two, we almost had two freezer babies this run. Like, oh, I get it. You know, Cassie had sex with Nate. But we've followed that same plot line for six fucking episodes. Give me a goddamn break. I want to see just anything new, please. Please freeze or explode. That works too for me. Got so many, like, frozen enemies this game. I, I love uh, Uranus so goddamn much. What an amazing item. I'm glad we ended up uh, choosing to get this item over, obviously, the, 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 the worst planetarium item, that being Jupiter. But, hey, I'm glad we have it. I'm really glad we do. And we're going to hopefully get an angel deal uh, <laughs> on this floor so we can pop our Lemiga Town inside of that as well. And the key piece does boost our chance of an angel deal appearing over a devil deer. Deer? A devil deer if, if the, uh, the door gets blocked by a different door, you know what I'm saying? Now, if, if the, the doors appear and only one is allowed to appear in that certain boss arena, it is a positive chance for an angel deal to appear over a devil deal. If that makes sense to you. But and if you're going to recommend me shows, by the way, like... Please do not recommend me any anime. I'm not. I'm not 14. No, it's. I don't mind anime. Here's the thing. I think that 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 all, one of my favorite shows of all time is an anime, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. But more often than not, if I watch an anime, I'm going to really hate it and have a lot of really negative and dumb opinions about that anime. And, and uh, I shouldn't have popped that yet. What What are you doing, but brother? What are you doing? Here's Here's the reason why, though. Here's the reason why. I want to give you guys an actual reason as to why I dislike it. Um, I think a lot of the huge, a lot of the time, that's nice as well. I'm going to bomb for key piece. We could fight eternal mega. So, eh, you know what? I don't have the HP to warrant or, or the, the charge to warrant fighting. I'm just going to move on. Let's just move on down. A lot of the times anime has just the most ridiculous plots to follow. And they end up just being f stupid to me. Like, the most recent one I've tried watching uh, an anime was an anime called Future Diary, which I know it's beloved by many. <laughs> and a lot of you guys I I've seen in the comments have uh, told me to watch it. Ooh, Black Market. I will definitely be buying a lot from down there. What's in here? Okay. Uh, we can use this for pretty much jack... Oh, I had a bomb down right. We'll use it right now. Wow, a penny. Ooh, Sola Magdalene. That's going to be huge for getting charges, though, if we can... Uh... Oh, wow. We can actually walk into this room here. Pop it. Pop this. Oh, you, you do drop red hearts upon that kind of... And a crawl space. Oh, my God. We're getting really lucky with all of this here. We did not gain a lot of charges there, but it definitely was a good amount. Uh, I tried watching the show Future Diary with my girlfriend, and she enjoyed a lot of it, but the ending kind of made her upset. And it, you know, her telling me what the ending was, I didn't actually make it all the way there because the show definitely took me out of it. Um, it also pissed me off just thinking about how poorly it was handled. So the premise of this show called Future Diary is that a, a bunch of random individuals have these phones that are, are, are journals that are written by future versions of them. And they can use these journals to predict certain events happening. And uh, the, the premise essentially is that there is this, this overarching um, Grim Reaper god. I, I think it's supposed to be like death. It's supposed to be just randomly just like just dead ass. Supposed to be like god. I, I don't know. I didn't really get super involved in it. But God is, is, is essentially dying, and he wants to pick his next heir. So he gives these individuals these future-defining phones and says, all right, last one of you standing gets to be God and use my power for whatever you want to use it for. And they all go, oh, that's sick. I'm going to use the power of God to revive, you know, my, my dead relatives and, and all this good stuff and whatever. So one of these phones is given to a, like, 
I'm assuming he's, he's got to be like 13 because this, this character is fucking insufferably annoying. Uh, the main character, oh, Dry Baby, uh, is this like 13 year old boy who gets the phone and he's like one of those, you know, I don't want to kill anybody. I'm too nice for that kind of guy. That was a really good anime. Pro that was a really good anime protagonist voice. Holy shit. I'm proud of myself for that one. Well, not really, actually. I, I, I take that back. Um, and one of the other characters is a girl who is obsessed with the main character, which is trope number A that I hate. Trope number A. Trope number one that I hate is when this seemingly average and, and really not special individual uh, main character is just somehow wanted by everybody in the show. Every fucking girl wants to open up their pussy at him. It's like, it doesn't make any sense to me because he's just entirely annoying and it's just, it feels like the writer is trying to self-insert their dopey middle school self. Like, I would have gotten bitches if this was my award. I would have gotten so much pussy if I was, uh, this, if, I, if there were girls like this in my school, which is not the case, you would have gotten zero pussy. I hate to break it to you, sir. You would have gotten nothing. But, um, I just, I hate that trope of just like, somewhat really attractive girl is obsessed with dopey happy-go-lucky protagonist character but essentially this girl will go as far as to kill the other contestants of this game for him and says at the end of it she uh would kill herself to give him the godhood and so i'm going to give you guys a fast forward a bit of an abridged here they find a bunch of wacky you know diary future diary users it's all crazy and wacky and fun I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fight the boss. I think. Well, go to your item room first. I guess it's it's so wacky. They, there's one who's like a four year old who can suddenly you know do all these crazy. Like okay, here here's the biggest thing to me. That my my one of my bigger gripes is there was this four year old who got the diary, and this four year old was so smart that they ordered like poisonous gas off fucking Amazon and put it into the main character's house. And bes what else did they do? They fucking like created an electricity death trap in a tub with salt and open wires like it, it doesn't make any fucking sense like <laughs> i know it's anime it's not supposed to make sense but you can't expect me as a watcher to take your show seriously or, or to like take your your themes and your plot seriously when there is a four-year-old who is committing like fucking unabomber level intelligence crimes against these two people like I'm, I'm not going to want to watch your show after that point. And I, here, this is coming from a fucking Star Wars fan. Like, come on. I, I, I have a very low bar for entertainment. But I, I cannot sit through that. It's just so fucking hard to watch and take that shit seriously. I'm sorry, but it really is. And uh, to, to go even further there, they, they kill this little four-year-old or whatever. And it's this super like, oh, no, we killed a four-year-old. We're so bad. Whatever. Now, here is what the ending was. Uh, explained to me by my girlfriend after she finished the show. Uh, how do I fucking explain this? So essentially, um, to no one's surprise, the, the last two standing people are the obsessive girl and the happy-go-lucky protagonist, right? That's how every show ends up being in, in, this, in this genre. And um, the girl is planning to kill herself to give the guy the godhood. But the guy's like, uh, no, don't kill yourself. We can, we can do it together. We can, we can be gods together. Which, she's like, oh, I guess I guess we can for some reason, because, uh, plot. And, um, the god's like, hmm, I, I guess so, sure, why not? And I, I, I think what happens in some degree is that the, the girl, like, kills the guy for some reason. I don't fucking know, dude. It doesn't make any sense to me. By the way, definitely taking Eden's blessing here. Um, the girl, like, kills the guy and wants to get... And her plan as godhood is to, uh, what I believe is revive the guy so that she can live with him, or or to create a separate world where they can live together happily. But the god goes, oh, actually, my my powers have limits, and I cannot bring anyone back to life. Uh, sorry. And so she's like, well, what's the point of all this shit? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Ooh, first try, nice. Ooh. Damn. Second try though. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. But, um, well, she's like, damn, I, I guess then what I want to do instead is create a separate world where we can live together. And he's like, okay. And he creates that world. They create that world. And then it's like, wait a minute. Why isn't he happier? Why does he, like, die in every outcome? And the, the, the god is like, to, uh, sorry, this is a very bad explanation, but 
I, I'm doing it as best as I can. I do apologize, though. But the god is like, oh, well, you actually have done this same thing before, but every time it happens, you know, there has to be a god, and that's me, then I end up dying, and you gotta do the whole, like, future diary hunger game, so I'm sorry about that. So basically what happens is that you find out that every single instance of, of this universe is... If she does not assume power as god, then she... How does it go? It's, it's, it's this fucking dumb, I swear to you. It is this fucking stupid. Um, then she will just reset the world so that she can just be in this time loop, spending as much time as possible with the guy during these games, which, sure, I guess it's, it's, it's a little bit cool, I'll admit that aspect of it, but it still is fucking stupid. Um, but try So that involves that she has won it before, and there's now time travel, which everyone loves time travel in their media, uh, obviously, which no one likes time travel. It fucking sucks. It, it's the laziest trope of all time and it's always done extremely wrong in almost every single time it's done really wrong okay we're gonna be buying like oh there's a restock machine here and we have nine lives crawl space in a crawl space no we'll save that card but that's interesting sure sure um okay do you want... I think you want BFF so your Wisps are stronger. But I'll take it. I'm going to die and be respawned out of this room. I can walk back in. And then we can re-roll this stuff. And get an item like member card. Which is huge. And we can also buy, like, literally all of these battery items. I'm, I'm not going to buy 4.5. I know it's really good for breaking the game, but primarily, uh, I, I don't find that it gives me any more charges than I normally would get from just, you know, having a regular item. So we'll take that. We respawn again. We can go back in here, and we can start rolling some more. So why don't we roll one? I don't think that Soul of Esau can buy items, by the way. If that is a play, I do apologize. Now, that is really good uh, because we can now get restocks um, in our member card rooms and in here as well. This, what does this give us on this floor? Is it like soul hearts? It is. So that actually is worth it. And we die. We come back in here. Four soul hearts for an extra two items to buy. Roll again. Obviously, you do want to get birth right here. Okay, good ones. Actually, decent ones. And we'll just put a bomb down to end this off. And we do actually, once again, want to get, like, this. <laughs> we do want to buy that. Right, I'm going to skip Champion's Belt. Actually, I'm going to skip Mystery Gift as well. I don't see a point in that right now. But, yeah, we actually gained, got, uh, we gained one, two, three, four. We gained eight items in this room alone. Wow. That's pretty nice. We could take Mystery Gift and use that. Book of Shadows is actually pretty good and useful for us right now. Well, why don't we try to buy it with this character? Yeah, I, I didn't think you could. It did drop us some soul hearts, though. Which I do appreciate. Um, here, I'm going to walk... I, I don't like this guy following me here. So walk out of the room, walk back in. What else is on the ground? That's a health. We could now afford it and not lose a single life. Ah, there's another health up. Ah, uh, you know what? You've sold me. I'll take it. I'll take it. And we'll have the world card as well. I mean, we have so much shit now. Like, we are not going to lose. Look, look at our wisps. They're they're supercharged with BFF, and we have like four high quality, really tanky ones. And we can now also pop the uh, reverse world card. World and go down here. Crawl space again. Oh my god, it's huge. Is it a black market, though? It's not a black market. It's just... 
a bunch of random stuff. It's a cool looking crawl space. For sure. I'm getting the hell out of here. Goodbye. No! Don't stomp on me, please. Okay, we're out of there. Let's just keep going. I, I feel pretty good. Anyways, going back to Future Diary. Uh, it involves time travel, and she ends up making a world where she finds out the only way that the main character, the boy, ends up happy is when she is not in his life. So I think she decides to then assume godhood and create a separate world for him where he's happy. And then she also brings everybody back to life in that world, which I thought was illegal based off the premise you can't bring people back to life. But if, if that's if you can make a roundabout other world, I guess, sure, man. It just, it, it's stupid to me. Like, it, it does these whole things where it makes these plots, like, larger than life. And it, it really does take away, I think, from the severity of the, the character's actions. A, a good example, I think, of a, a movie that or a series, I should say, that, that takes the premise of a self-contained plot and grows that self-contained plot to a bigger margin without making it seem silly or dumb or or, or a big trade-off in quality. And hear me out here. It's going to sound weird at first, but Pirates of the Caribbean. So here's the thing, is plots are always better when they are self-contained in their own world. If plots weren't self-contained, then every single fucking Batman movie would be like, oh, here's fucking General Zod, who's back to life, and Cyborg Superman, and then there's fucking Brainiac. It would be this mess of just constant fan service, constant just uh, of these, these epic, you know, soy boy Marvel big battles going on. You want to have plots that can still be in these overpowered and, and crazy wacky worlds, but also still be grounded in somewhat reality. I think it's a good way to explain it. Wow. Glad we uh, bought that earlier. I think we're on the same page there in terms of plot. And Pirates of the Caribbean does this thing where the, the first movie starts out very fucking self-contained. Very, very self-contained. And to that same degree, um, the plot then feels cohesive and grounded in reality. And uh, although it doesn't feel like it could happen in real life, it definitely does feel a bit more relatable in that sense. As opposed to gaining godhood and creating other worlds, obviously. And when the first movie ends, and the plot obviously is that uh, Jack Sparrow wants revenge for getting mutinied when he was a, a captain of a previous ship. Pretty standard stuff when it comes to pirate shit. And um, that's it. He's just, he's just selfish. He wants his ship back and he'll do anything he can to get it. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Now, movie two takes the, the world of pirates into this more um, universal state. Well, now that there's, there's overlooming threats in the ocean. There is Davy Jones and his, his army of compatriots who are the undead, pretty much. They are people who sold their souls for fame and fortune and, and good things in real life, but when they die, have to work for eternity on Davy Jones' ship. I think we all know uh, the plot of Pirates at this point, because Pirates is a very popular movie franchise, as we all know it. Why am I firing tears just by moving? What the f- Is it when you grab- Why are we firing t I'm not pressing any firing button. Oh, we have Ludovico. Oh. Well. I think that change- Oh, I have flight as well. That kind of changes. We're losing money, which we need for member cards. I'm kind of worried about that, but whatever. Anyways, the plot becomes more universally built, where you're now focusing more on the side character of Will Turner and Elizabeth- and Will Turner's dad, and shit like that. Um, and you might think you might lose the central premise of a pirate movie, which is watching Jack Sparrow be charismatic and do whatever the hell he wants. But no, because they, they interweave Jack and his backstory, and Jack and his future story as well, into the, the story of, of the main villain, Davy Jones. Which, a, a lot of movies try to do that, where they're like, okay, we want to make, you know, this really fearful villain still feel relevant and, and it's scaled in power to our plot and a lot of movies what they'll do is they'll just like have it be like oh this person is this character's dad or they killed their parents you know like uh guardians of the galaxy 2 with ego uh, that the big planet destroying guy is his dad and now there's more of a like emotional reason to to want to be with him or to fight him and shit like that which sure that that works a little bit but i think pirates takes this um a step further if that makes sense what's in here God, that was... We never get good member card luck. That fucking blows. I'll buy this, though. And I'll give some money back to good old machine. 
Get behind it. There we go. Yeah, we're getting back to 200 here pretty soon. Um, but in Pirates, like... It's not only part of, of Jack's backstory, but it also gives a reason why Davy Jones is even there in the first... He's going to, to claim Jack's soul for a deal he made long ago. It gives reason for Davy Jones being there and makes Jack the center, the focus of the movie. It also ends up bringing the side characters in by saying, hey, Jack used to be on a boat with uh, Will Turner's dad. They used to be uh, crewmates, and it turns out that Bootstrap Bill is stuck on Davy Jones's crew. And the movie actually ends off with them introducing this really big um, kaiju, like, kraken into the story. Where now, like, they're they're giving these big sea monsters, you know, merit in the world. They're giving these really fearful figures like Davy Jones a place in the world. They're really kind of branching away from the self-contained jealousy plot of the first movie. But it still works because they're giving it a good power scaling. And it just overall makes sense for him to be there. It's not some just shoehorned in thing. I had to put it lightly, I guess. I don't want to shit on the movie too, or I, I don't want to praise it because it's it's it, but it's a fantastic movie either way. I don't want to praise it too much, obviously. And um, in the next movie, they find a way to bring Jack after he was killed by the Kraken back to life, which sounds like something I would hate, right? I don't like when movies just all willy-nilly mess with the fabrics of their own, like, you know, uh, life. Because at that point, why not bring everybody back to life? Well, here's the thing, is that they technically, they can. Because they brought back the first movie's Dylan, Barbosa, as a good character. And because he was brought back to life, he knew how to bring Jack back. So in a sense, that actually works pretty well. He knew how to bring Jack back because, well, he had been in the same place as him before. And not only that, but Jack is kind of like this character who you just know can't die. And he, if he does die, he'll find some way back to life. So the character already kind of alludes to that in his, in his own writing, I think, which is a dumb reason, I admit. But it it makes it seem more based in reality. Uh, ooh, no effect. Unidentified. I found pills. He did not. He didn't say it there. What? Oh, what a what a loser. Um. And but for some reason, like it works because Jack being brought back feels right for his character, and they don't say like, oh, it only it's only Jack. They they kind of know you can bring almost any fallen pirate back to life through Davy Jones's locker, as long as he dies at sea, he can be brought back, which. Might make you think like, well, that if that's like the, the point, or that that's if that's the case, why there's there's no risk anymore? Why have I, I lost Ludo? Thank fucking god! Like, what's the point of the entire movie anymore? I mean, because like then every villain ever can be brought back to life, um, and that's true. You know, you could ask your, yourself that question, but um, none of the villains have anybody who would want to bring them back. Is the, is the issue? Like Davy Jones doesn't have. Any friends who want him to be alive. Everybody on his crew pretty much just wants to be freed anyways. So it kind of writes itself in that regard. But how do you make a movie where they introduce these big-ass kaiju monsters? They, they bring in gods like Calypso and, and almost Davy Jones as well into the equation. How do you make that still... And make the main characters and the main plot still feel relevant? Um, the thing is, is that like... They paint them to all still be mortal. Like, they may have these feats of, of great human ability, like swinging from ship to ship or swimming forever and shit like that, but you know that they're just still humans who have a lot of fucking luck on their side. Think, for example, think of, like, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. How do you make a character like Krillin relevant in a story where they're now bringing in all these gods and, and, and big-ass, like, you know... Almost unbeatable people from across the universe. Well, you you kind of gotta almost make him irrelevant. Like you can. Oh, I lost H. That sucks. I lost HP. Two lives. Uh, risky, risky stuff. I want to get some more HP if we can here. You kind of have to just let the viewer know that they're all still mortal. 
Secret room is nice. I really need... There's HP. Some kind of extra defense going on here. Because, like... I guess Sad Bombs, I didn't realize we had those still, is pretty damn good. I'm going to pop the Sun card now so we know where our boss fight and our special rooms are going to be. Luck up is nice. This could be good. Okay. We have, we have one and a half hearts right now. And uh, that is it. That is it, gamers. And it's not... We have Holy Mantle. We do not... Okay, that was a misplay. We do not have Holy Mantle anymore. Now we're at half a heart. Uh, I think it's time to go to our arcade. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think it's time to go give our arcade a, a visit here. That, and, and our super secret room as well. Might be kind of a, a good thing to do. Look for some uh, good old tinted rocks and, and stuff like that. All right, you are gone. Thank you. There was no fortune machine in here, sadly. I'm going to bomb you. I'm going to also bomb you. You get bombs back. All right. Oh, why do my bombs drop other bombs sometimes? What's causing that? Mulligan. I just want to keep a good rotation of... We need shot speed pretty badly as well. Our shot speed is horrendous in certain cases. That's nice for the rest of this floor, I guess. But what was I saying? You got you to find a way to make these mortal characters feel relevant and power scaling. For the big bad, like, like the Kraken and like Davy Jones. And I think what... what Pirates does pretty well with that is the story never drifts too far from Jack Sparrow. Like, you're not basing your power, like, in Dragon Ball Z, you are basing your power scaling off of Goku, who is the most powerful character in the show uh, at pretty much any, that's good, that's huge actually, at pretty much any point in the actual show, he's seen as the most powerful. Um, he might get stomped on a little bit, but he usually always gets back up. Fuck me, dude. I mean, it's sad bombs, which is nice, but it's still a little bit scary. We're going to have to, to power pill in the boss fight to kill the uh, the eyes without being hit with our low, low, low shot speed and fire rate. But I will cross that bridge when we get there. But the power scaling is always based around Jack. It's always what can Jack do, and it bases every... No matter how much more or less powerful a character is, it's always based off of Jack. If you, if you base your power off of your strongest character, it's going to cause issues because at that point, you're striving to always make something more powerful than that character. That's why I think Superman is never going to be as, as a big name as Batman is. Because, oh, we already saw that, right? I gotta focus here for a minute. Hold on. Good. 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 Now just stand here? Why are your tears so fast if you're slow? At least you're dead either way. No deal. Void portal though. Don't really care for that. We still have epic fetus. We no longer have sad bombs though it looks like. And our pill changed. I don't know why. Oh, we lost PhD. That's probably why our pill changed. Still a little bit risky here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lay it on you guys too flat, but it is uh, a little bit risky. This could help though. A little bit. <laughs> uh, if it gives me my boss fight early, there it is. I'll consider it a pretty fucking success. There we go. We're actually in an amazing position right now. I would say. It may seem dire. It may seem... Oh, we lost stopwatch, and now he's, he's extra fast? We lost our epic fetus as well. It's hard to keep track of our items in this in this game. I'll give you that fucking uh, tidbit. It's really hard to... See. Why are you so... Oh, it's broken stopwatch. That's fucking why. It's broken goddamn stopwatch. Well, there's damage for us. Nice. Okay, the chest has to pay out. But I want to wrap my thoughts up before I got to stop bantering to focus. Um, it's because the, the Pirates movies scale everyone's power to Jack, so everyone still feels mortal and attainable when it comes to... Um, not, not killing them, but taking them down, I should say. Also, it doesn't take itself way too fucking seriously like a lot of anime does. All right. Wow, straw man. I'm ecstatic right now. 
Oops. Oh, you know, you can die in there, actually. Never mind, you're gonna live. Can we go up is my big question. We can. I don't know if the boss fight will be here. We definitely can. We have, we have Isaac's fucking heart. God damn it, car battery giving me a bunch of... I, I, here's the thing. I can't tell what I have because car battery... Oh, that's good. That's real good. Car battery is giving me a tons of shit. Um, is this going to bring us back down or closer to the boss fight? I can't tell. We, we can't see the name of half the items we're gaining from Linnega Town because of car battery. Giving us two at once and therefore only showing us one item tag. Which is why I didn't know I had Ludovico, Sad Bombs, or Isaac's Heart. So th there's your answer there, I guess. Good defense on the Wisp side, though. We should be winning this run with all of our Bone Hearts pretty easily. Pretty goddamn easily. Marbles. Okay, there's the boss fight. Huge. That's a lot of tears. That's a lot of tears. Okay, back it up. Stay calm. HP, please. Let's uh, go in. Let's just go in. We should be fine. I think we're going to be okay. A little bit of focus never hurt nobody. Right, tears up there. Nice. Strawman's still alive, by the way, which is a huge surprise to me. Or did we, like, respawn him just now with... I don't even know where Strawman came from, to be real with you. Was that a holy mantle for some reason once again, though, which is also very good to see. We will be beating Blue Baby here. I don't want to fight Delirium on this run. Are you a I don't think we have the prowess to do so. So I'm just going to end the run. I thought we jumped into the void portal on accident there, and I was very scared because the screen, like, warped in. But anyways, guys... That is going to be it for today's run. If you enjoyed, a like and a comment goes a long way. Go sub to the new channel. It's linked down below. Follow my Twitch, join Discord, all of that good stuff. But in the meantime, guys, I have been BD1P. Peace out and goodbye.